Thank you so much. Uh, thank you for those who uh, joined. And I want to give a special shout out to my uh, University of Michigan contingency who are here to support me, so go blue. I do have seven minutes, and so I'll try and make this quick. Um, I'm here really setting the stage for what is going to be a very exciting discussion on um, CME and D3 uh, lymph node resection. What I'm going to be discussing today is primarily going to be a review for most of you in the room. Um, let's see if we can advance. Could we advance to the next slide? Okay. Thank you. I have nothing to disclose. I will say go blue. Um, so in order for us to understand um, the lymph node resections, as most of you know, we have to think about the blood supply to the bowel. And so again, this is really a review. My topic was supposed to be on transverse tumors, how we manage those. Um, so mainly we are going to be thinking about the SMA. The SMA, as you can see from this uh, picture, gives branches on the left side to the jejunal and ileum. And then on the right side has the iliocolic artery branch, the right colic, which is absent in about 20% of people. And then we have the middle colic artery, which is usually what we are thinking about when we are uh, discussing tumors in the hepatic or the transverse colon. Now the middle colic artery has a right and a left branch, and this is become, will be more relevant in a, a slide I have coming up, where we discuss exactly which branch do you take when you're doing certain resections. Um, our colleagues in the East have done a very great job mapping all the lymph nodes that um, are related to the colon. And this is the whole map system here. Um, the ones in red are what we call the pericolic um, lymph nodes. These are lymph nodes that you find running along the border of the colon. And then the blue ones are the intermediate lymph nodes. These are the lymph nodes which are sort of along the major branches of the SMA um, highlighted in the previous slide. And then the yellow ones are our main or central lymph nodes. Um, this is important when you factor in the um, resection or the extent of the resection that our colleagues in the East do, and this has to do around the D1, D2, D3 resections. And mainly what you're trying to do is grab as many of these lymph nodes in those particular basins. So D1 will be um, lymph nodes around the colon margin and then um, all the way down to a D3, which grabs all of those basins, the pericolic, the intermediate, and then the main lymph nodes. Now, knowing the lymph nodes is helpful when it comes to a staging. So for most of you in the room, when you think about staging, how many lymph nodes do you take with your colonic resection, we all have the magic number 12 in our mind. And that has a lot to do with our own NCCN guidelines here. What I have on this slide is just showing you how those guidelines will have changed between the sixth and the seventh edition. On the top side is what we use here in the US or in the West, these are the NCCN guidelines. And on the uh, right side, on the seventh edition, you can see a lot of our staging for lymph nodes has to do with a number. And so that's why it's important for us when we are taking lymph nodes or we are having discussions, we talk about grabbing at least 12 for uh, pathologists to do their staging, but also it helps our oncologists determine if they need to do additional chemotherapy after surgery. This is a little bit different from um, our Eastern colleagues who use the lymph nodes in terms of their location to direct or drive their staging. So you can see uh, for an N1, they're talking about pericolic, perirectal lymph nodes, and intermediate lymph nodes, and an N3 is where they draw in the main lymph nodes. For the, so for them, it is very critical in terms of where you are actually getting these lymph nodes. It's not just a matter of number of lymph nodes, but location. Now this location of lymph nodes or the number of lymph nodes then impacts in terms of how we do our resection or what we are going for. So for the complete mesocolic excision, and this is a direct application of things that we've been doing for our rectal cancer. So in rectal cancer now, the standard of care or when you're doing a surgical technique is to make sure you get all the lymph nodes, the entire lymph node basin um, around the rectum or the tumor of interest. And this is what we call the TME, uh, so the total mesorectal excision. And studies have been done where they've tried to apply this to the colon also, where they try and take this mesocolic excision, taking out the whole colon and its mesocolon in an intact membrane such that you do not violate the mesocolon. 
Um, you can see from the picture there that in a D2 or the conventional resection that we do, we sort of attempt to do that, but we don't do typically as high a ligation on the um, vessel of interest or the feeding vessel. And then the dotted lines uh, indicate usually where our resection on the mesocolon is. And this is very different from the CME. The CME has very clearly defined borders, which my co-panelist, Dr. Ashburn, will go into more details. When you do a CME, you tend to grab more lymph nodes. You tend to typically take larger uh, margins, proximally and distally on your bowel. Um, most surgeons will end up taking 10 centimeters of uh, margin, proximally and distally, in order to clear the bowel, but also in an attempt to get those 12 lymph nodes that we focus on. Sorry. Now, when we think about which vessel do we resect, and um, this is why we went through the pedicles initially, but you can see a lot of it is dependent on where your tumor is located. So for right-sided colons, and again, this is a review for most of you in the room, right-sided ones, we're usually going for our iliocolic pedicle. And then as you move further up, depending on the distance of the tumor from your feeding vessel of interest, this is going to determine if you end up taking the right branch of the middle colic or if you attempt to take the full middle colic artery. Um, as it goes to the hepatic flexure and then further along, you usually are going to aim for the middle colic artery. And now with the CME and then the D3 lymph node resections, our approach is typically, again, you're going for the main feeding vessel, and so your MCA is going to be more of, of an interest in those situations. Now, I mentioned the D3. This is what our Eastern colleagues do. And the lymph node basins is what primarily drives the iris section. It is very different from what we do here in the West, where we attempt to get clear margins, take a high ligation, get some lymph nodes, ideally 12. For them, it is very much, you have to do these D3 resections or lymph node resections in order to get all those um, basins to help with your staging. Um, there's a, also a strong belief that this affects outcomes, oncologic outcomes, which other panelists will discuss today. Um, there's this no-touch approach, which I wanted to briefly bring up, and this is something we do um, here in the West also, but basically what you're trying to do is isolate your tumor and avoid its seeding or shedding during your um, resection or your mobilization. So you do your high ligation on your vessel, ideally in the CME or in the D3 going all the way to the origin. You resect your margins before you do your mobilization of your colon. So on the right side, before you mobilize, take down the white line, you would have done those two uh, procedures and you completely cut off the tumor from the circulation. Um, usually with the D3, the goal, from at least from the literature that I saw, was to get uh, 10 centimeter margins on either side. So we are going to spend a lot of time today discussing which approach is better. For most of you in this room, again, you typically would do the conventional, the D2, um, get your 12 lymph nodes, because that is what the NCC and guidelines um, facilitate as being ideal. But there's definitely some benefits to the CME, and there's definitely some benefits to the D3, which other panelists will discuss. So thank you for your attention, and I'm out of time. Thank you.